Hey guys, it's Yanu again and today we're going to be looking at enzymes. Enzymes are the dream employee of any organization and unlike their counterparts, when they walk in the room, they actually get things done. Man, I sure would like to get some human enzymes into government offices, but oh well. So welcome guys, strap in and we'll get into the juicy parts in a gif. Enzymes are biological catalysts and as we all probably know, a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without undergoing permanent changes to itself in the process. And enzymes in particular can make reactions up to a billion times faster than if there were no enzymes and we'll probably appreciate this more with an illustration. Without enzymes, food would sit in your stomach for years and years on end before they could completely digest Needless to say, we'd probably be rotten and decaying, leaving mere bones as testaments of our existence by the time this happened. <laughs> so, cause of this, basically all biological reactions are catalyzed by enzymes and so there are a ton of them. Like in a single human cell, we could have up to 1,300 enzymes. I know. Whoa. <laughs> Now that we know that without enzymes, life as we know it would not be possible, so they're obviously important. So let's look at some general characteristics. Number one, most enzymes are proteins. And at first, we used to think that all enzymes were proteins, but that was until the discovery of ribozymes in the early 1980s. So I think 1982 to be precise. Ribozymes. You could guess from their names, they are RNA molecules that act as enzymes. And an example is during RNA splicing, some introns can serve as ribozymes for their own removal. Sad. Next, they're really specific about who they attack. They're not just efficient, they're precise. Please get me one of those in human form. Or a dog, I wouldn't mind either. <laughs> And number three, some of them require cofactors, and these types that do are called apoenzymes. And when they combine with the cofactor, they are then called oloenzymes or conjugated enzymes. Now, cofactors are interesting stuff. They can either be organic or inorganic. If they're inorganic, they're mostly metal ions or atoms or something. And if they're organic, they're either prosthetic groups or coenzymes. Now, coenzymes are pretty cool. Because they are loosely bound to the enzymes and so I mean to the apple enzymes and so they are easily removed by dialysis. And just by the way, dialysis is the separation of molecules based on their rates of diffusion through a semi-permeable membrane. Prosthetic groups, on the other hand, they're like a clingy ass girlfriend. <laughs> A boyfriend, I guess, a clingy partner, basically the kind that even dynamites couldn't keep away. The point is that to remove a prosthetic group from an apoenzyme, you will most likely end up destroying the structure. So they are more or less like permanent parts, almost permanent. Basically, they are really very tightly bound to the enzymes. And also, enzymes could also have activators or inhibitors. And just from the name, activators increase the catalytic. <laughs> Activators increase the catalytic activity of enzymes and they could also do this through by increasing the substrate's affinity, basically the likelihood that the substrate will bind to the enzyme. And some examples of these are magnesium ion or the manganese ion. While inhibitors on the other hand are basically the opposite of activators and they could either block the active site where the substrate is supposed to bind to the enzyme or they could distort the active sites by bonding somewhere else on the enzyme. And that somewhere else is usually called the allosteric site. Some common enzyme inhibitors are hydrogen sulfide or erythromycin or ciprofloxacin. Okay, I got that. Just move on. <laughs> Some common examples of enzymes are lipases. Lipases are made in the pancreas, the mouth, and in the stomach. And the function of lipases is usually fat metabolism. Amylase is also an enzyme. It's mostly made in salivary glands and the pancreas. And the function of amylase is for starch metabolism, for breaking down starch to simple or simpler sugars. 
Maltase found in saliva metabolizes maltose into glucose and trypsin found in its small intestine metabolizes proteins into amino acids. So today we have learned about enzymes, their functions, their importance and why they are the cool guys that you always want to have on your side <laughs> if ever they were in human form. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next video. Bye.